Office of uh, Django Web Development. And uh, this is my first Chippy talk ever, so uh, here's that. Uh, I'm going to talk about um, something I really like, which is Django and searching stuff, and specifically searching documents, uploaded documents with Django. So um, let's say you're building a website, you need a search feature, uh, you type in a search term, and you get a, a bunch of results. I want to be able to search uh, and return PDFs, Word documents, et cetera, uh, within those search results. So this was a challenge I had recently, and um, this talk is going to be specifically about um, how I kind of went about solving that problem. And uh, it's not an in-depth um, talk about Django search, um, but it's just about the specific circumstances here. So the common tool for searching in Django is a, um, a tool called um, Haystack. And you probably, a lot of you have heard of it, but for those of you who haven't, I'm just going to give a brief overview of, of it. Um, so Django Haystack, it's a Django module that is a, an abstraction layer for doing search-related things. It's um, nice because it's, it's got syntax that's familiar to Django developers. It's easy to, to do uh, queries in a kind of a Django-like way. Um, and it's, its limitation is that it's designed specifically to search content in Django models or content that's in your database. So, um, and one nice thing about it is that it, it, it uh, interfaces <coughs> with a lot of search backend servers like uh, Elasticsearch, Solar, Zapien, Woosh, and I think there might be others. I'm going to talk today a little bit about Elasticsearch, which is um, kind of my, my favorite um, search backend for Haystack. And it's an open source server. It's written in Java. You can run it on a port um, and inter interface with it that way. Um, it's nice because it's got a JSON syntax, so you can query it from various languages. And um, it's uh, pretty simple to, to use. And there's lots of tools, um, lots of Python and um, other language tools to interface with it. And um, Haystack supports it, but it doesn't support uh, document search out of the box. So you can't, there's no means to go in and search um, the contents of uploaded documents, which would be nice. So that's why I'm doing this talk. Uh, here's a very brief look at how it kind of fits together. Haystack's a uh, um, abstraction on top of Django. It has a bunch of um, forms and query sets and stuff that you can use to do the search. Haystack interacts with the search backend, in this case, Elasticsearch. Um, Haystack has something called a search index, which is um, basically how you define a mapping between your Django models and the search backend. So this is kind of where you say which fields in your model you want to, um, to index in, in, in your search index. Also, um, there's two management commands that you can use to, that you have to run each time you make an update to your index. Usually you might do this on a periodic basis, like um, once every few hours, or it depends on how fresh you want your search index to be. But the update index and the rebuild index are, are these management commands for doing just that. So throughout this talk, I'm going to use an example here. Um, here, And um, it's hard to see with the, the cutoff screen, but this is a Django model. And um, uh, it's called, it's defined as a class called file up or file upload. It's got a name and a description attribute. And it's also got a file upload field, uh, a file field. OK. So then um, there's, um, here's an example of the search index class. And what you can't see is um, a class definition called uh, file search index that inherits from search index and an indexable. And um, it's got two attributes, a name and a description attribute. Or, to, or to, that correspond to the name and description attributes on the on the model. So this is basically saying uh, uh, mapping the index to use um, those two fields for its indexing. And then it's got a text attribute, which is um, part of Haystack syntax. And finally, it's got a get model class right here, and that's what defines um, which Django model you want to index with this particular index. Um, 
So let's take a brief aside. Let's talk about getting text out of documents. And there's two ways that I found to do this. And one of them is there's this cool project called Tika. It's a Java, um, Java-based app or module or jar. And it's uh, hosted by the Apache project. It's been around for a while, and it supports a lot of different formats. For example, um, you can search, you know, well, any number of these document or documents. There's a lot of stuff that it does, so it's very extensive and it's um, a pretty big project. But it's Java, which um, sometimes doesn't play well with Python, so I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, to install it, first of all, you need uh, a JDK. Um, so if you're on a Debian-based system, you do aptitude install JDK or default JDK. And then there's this, the magic happens in this um, Python module called Genius. And this is um, a really cool Python module I'll talk a little bit more about. But it basically is what defines an inter interface between Python and um, Java. It's uh, Genius spelled J-I-N-U-S. Also, in order for this to work, you need the jar file Tika, which is downloadable from their website. So um, here's an example of how you would use a genius to extract text from, uh, from a document, like a PDF. And you'll notice at the top there's first, um, we're setting the class path to include Tika on that class path and, and exporting it as an environment variable. And then we're importing uh, genius with this special auto class function. And then uh, it's hard to see, but uh, it's setting, um, it's defining, uh, the magic happens in these lines. It's um, defining this Java class to be um, the Python class called Tika, and a metadata class, a Java class called metadata, and a file input stream class is mapping to a Java file input stream class. So then uh, in this function parse to string, I'm just uh, instantiating the uh, Tika class and the metadata class, and then calling the uh, parse to string method on the Tika class, passing in the file name, which is just the, uh, the string for the location of the file, and then we get um, text, text from the document out of it. It's, it's that easy. It's, it's magical. So here's a sample PDF that we're going to input. Uh, it's uh, quite riveting stuff. And um, you know, here's just a, an example usage of um, making a call to that uh, parse to string um, attribute or method on uh, Tika, passing in the file name, and you get the contents back and the strings back. So um, uh, the second way to go about extracting data or a, a different approach. In fact, <coughs> as I was research, research as I was researching this talk, I just um, encountered this module. It's pretty new. It's called uh, Textrack. In fact, I, looking at the uh, GitHub commits, um, the first commit was somewhere in the summer of last year. So it's um, uh, just started up. But it's a, a new project written in Python. And what it is is kind of like a Tika-like uh, tool, Python tool that wraps a bunch of other Python modules. So when you, do, um, when you install this thing, it installs a whole bunch of Python libraries. Um, it seems like it's a pretty nicely written app. I didn't look at it too deeply, but it's got tests, which is nice. Um, also, here's a bunch of um, supported formats that it, um, it does. It doesn't have quite as many as Tika does, but it's got all the big ones like PDF and uh, Excel and Word docs and uh, a bunch of other things. And here are the um, third-party packages that you need to install in order to um, support a particular format. It's hard to see, I know it's kind of small. Um, here's an example installation of um, TextRack. You're just apt aptitude installing a bunch of um, uh, system dependencies, and then pip install TextRack, and it goes right in, at least on Ubuntu it does, and on Mac. Using it can be simpler. You import it, and then you uh, execute textrack.process and provide it a file name, and you get the text back. So here's an example of um, another PDF document. And um, here's what it looks like after we call the process method on it, and you get the text back from that PDF. By the way, those 
documents are truncated. It's not the whole thing. Um, but uh, you'll notice that the images aren't extracted. It doesn't, it's not smart enough to like parse out the PS4 logo or the PS4 text. But um, for most cases, this does a pretty good job of getting the stuff inside of your, um, inside of your document. So now that we have some ideas of how we can extract text from various types of document formats, uh, now we need to integrate it with Haystack, which we um, uh, defined earlier, or which we were talking about earlier. So um, to do that, we need to make some updates to the Haystack index. And again, um, sorry, it's hard for you to see, but here's the index. It's got a special, a new method that we added in, in blue called prepare. And then um, there's a, something called a search template. I didn't mention it before, but um, the search template is um, a Django template that you basically have to define all of your um, fields in your index. And then uh, when the index process happens, it renders it to a string and sends that string to the, the search backend. But we're adding a new field to that, this um, extracted variable, which is defined here. I'll show you a little bit closer. Um, here, we're um, uh, inside this try accept block, uh, block, we're calling search utils parse the string. And that's just the, uh, the module that I had created before I showed you um, the search the string, either Im implementing either the Tika backend or, or the Tika um, approach or the text track approach. So um, it's just passing in the object.file path, uh, the path that we saw before. And it's getting the extracted text back. Now I'm not, I'm just doing a blanket except here. Um, probably you'd want to put some logging or something. If, if something um, broke, you'd probably want to log that. But um, I don't want to break the whole indexing process if um, this parse the string method failed for some reason or another. So um, then here we're rendering that search template. And we're passing in this, this the new thing here is we're passing in the, the extracted text and we extract the data into that template and just saving it to data.txt. This is how Haystack, that's just a convention of Haystack. You're assigning the, um, assigning the rendered string to that um, text. Um, so here's an example of some, uh, let's like do an implementation of this. And here we're like just creating some pretend file uploads. We're creating two documents. Um, saving them to a Django model, and this is mostly boilerplate to do that. And then I'm running the um, uh, update index management command here. I'm just calling it from a Python shell instead of running it on the command line. And you're, you're noticing it's indexing both of these files, or two, two file up objects have been indexed. And then if we issue some queries, uh, for example, um, we have a search query set. This is the Haystack query set. We can uh, uh, call search query set dot filter content and search for the term dizziness or security or firewall. And you'll notice that um, it returns back one result. Dizziness happens to be in the um, PlayStation 4 document because it's saying don't get dizzy when you play this. Uh, and then security is in both. And firewall is in the PCI document. So we're seeing that it is getting content back based on the contents in that um, of those documents. And then if we take a look at, um, uh, we can take a look at one of the search results just to prove that we are in fact um, getting that, that uh, search text out. I'm just printing the, uh, uh, the, the name, the description, those fields, and the text, which is, um, the text for um, the PlayStation 4, um, or in this no, the PCI reference guide in this case. So it is indexing it here. And this talk isn't really meant to show how to use Haystack because um, this is, uh, you know, Haystack has some great documentation. You can uh, you basically uh, take the search query set and iterate through it on a, um, in a Django template. Um, and Django has some tools that even make that process all pretty much automated. But the point is, um, this text is now, Haystack is now aware of this text and 
when you do um, search queries, you get back results based on um, contents of this string. So this was a short talk, um, but this was kind of the, um, the basic idea of how I approach this. I'm sorry you guys couldn't see it very well because of the, the screen, but uh, I'll post the slides and you guys can take a look at it. Um, but that's, yeah, you guys have any questions? Test, test. This isn't really a question. Well, I have a question, but I think that's uh, straw, not hay, right? What? It's straw, not hay. Yeah. Oh, whatever. But, <laughs> so, so my straw question stack. was, and, and, I, and I might have just missed this, but so does, does what, what does the traversing, like if you have, like you end up with a, if you have a large repository of files, how, do you traverse that yourself and then add it to the index, or is there a, a runner that, that goes out and finds all those files? So, um, What's finding, what's mapping the, or what's getting the, the file uploads, you mean? Well, that's what I was presuming you have. Oh, so you're, yeah. you're, you're doing index as you're doing the upload? So, no, so J Haystack, uh, you can set up real-time search indexes. So if there is an update, um, an update, uh, the index will automatically get updated. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, uh, for performance reasons, I think uh, people run the index process asynchronously or like a, with a cron job or a celery task every few hours or so, um, or every few minutes or whatever. So it's not, uh, when you add content, there's, there might be a delay between when you, um, when you add it and when you see it in the index. So, well, what, I was asking, what, so okay. what I was asking is, so I mean, you have Django models and it can just walk the, walk the data in the database, right? Mm -hmm. But if you have files, if you had, like you were showing, you had all those uh, PDFs and all that kind of stuff, I presume you have that in the file system, not in the database, right? Yeah, so the, um, let's see if I can go back to this, this the relevant slide, and uh, this here, uh, this is the, this object dot file is the, um, dot path, this is the actual path to, uh, or like this is the model, the model instance, File is the so file you attribute. Have to walk the process yourself, is what you're I mean, the index, the update, this process thing is doing it for you. Uh, when you run um, update so index, or yeah, this is the directory path here, oh, okay. or the file path, so the, the, the the path to um, when you save the model object. Sorry, I kind of brushed through this slide here, but um, here we're just importing file up, um, which is the the model. Um, we're opening a file here just from, from somewhere on your file system. We're creating a Django file object. We're, we're saving the file up model, or adding some name and description to the um, file up um, model instance. And then we're, this is where we're actually saving the Django file object to the, um, the model instance. And it's this, through Django storage backends and all sorts of magic, it's what copies that. Um, file to wherever you. I had a bunch of files that closed, like I, I got a dump of them, so I didn't go through that process. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I didn't go through an upload process. Then, is there a tool that will walk that file system for me and add everything, or do I do that myself? That's what. I was so, so you probably have to do that yourself. Okay. Django isn't really or Django Haystack isn't really designed to search files in this way. This is kind of like a hack around the fact that. Um, the Django, is design, Django Haystack is designed to search your models, right. index your models, and this is just, if you happen to have a file attached to your model, uh, you can kind of like scrape the data out and, and store it. You can, create a, you can create a model just for your files, and then it'll be part of the, like, and create an index for it in this similar way, and then, um, you know, it'll do it, but you have to kind of define that yourself. I was just really curious uh, what the difference between the update index and the rebuild index are. Like update when would you choose one over the other? Update index, I think you'd use mostly in um, like a production setting. You're just as you get new fields, you're uh, it's it runs it and only adds the additions. Um, Rec recreate just drops the whole index and um, and builds it again from scratch. Uh, for your development purposes, it doesn't matter. To me, it doesn't matter which I, which I use, but. For uh, big systems, you pretty much use update index. So I, I saw some characters in there. Is it Unicode friendly? Which one's Unicode friendly, and which one <laughs> is it? Like, have you tried with PDFs that were in? I haven't okay. tried like weird French encodings. I think it's, these are all probably been Unicode. Um, 
you the code string you get back from? Yeah, yeah, there's. Sorry, we're looking at a lot on here. Any more questions for him? Okay. All right, Sorry. thank you. Thank you very much. That was awesome. I don't only last the fifteen minutes. Well, no, that was a great. <laughs> that was great. It was very good. I like it when people.